Hello and welcome to Tutorial CU. My name is Yannick and in this video we will discover interfaces in C Sharp. So right here I have a clean console application, public class program, and here I just created an interface, public interface i animal. So if you want to create an interface, you will use the interface keyword and for the naming convention you will write down whatever you want to create an interface for and then put an i in front of it. So i animal is interface animal. That's just a naming convention. If you have no clue about C-sharp naming conventions, please check out our video on that topic. Now during this video, we will talk about three different topics. First of all, creation of interfaces and well common usage. Secondly, we will talk about interfaces and polymorphism. And afterwards, we will talk about interfaces and dependency injection. So definitely make sure to watch the video until the very end. Great, so our interface is just like a contract for a class. So inside of an interface, we can create a structure for a class, but we cannot create any implementations. Now, what does that mean? Because that sounds quite complicated, right? So here we have an interface for an animal. Now, if we have a lot of animals, like a dog and a bird and a cat, for example, they all share some functionalities, right? So one functionality could be to make a sound. So we take a return type. You can take any return type, but I will use a void here. And then we can give it a name, make sound. It's a method, right? But we are skipping the implementation. We are just creating the structure. So we have an empty void right here. We can also do this with properties. So for example, we could say leg count. So in that case, we would have an integer for property, let's say legs or leg count or whatever, just the amount of legs the animal has, get set, there we go. Now, for the make sound right here, this is now something that we want to share in all animals. So once we create additional classes, we can use the iAnimal interface to create a contract between the class and the interface itself. Alrighty, so let's discover why interfaces are so powerful. When we now create additional classes, let's say public class doc, we can implement the interface using the colon, so I animal, just like this, and then open up the curly braces. Now, I wanna mention that you can really implement many interfaces. So if we have another one, not only I animal, but we have another one, we could go ahead, add a comma here and add another interface. That's not a problem. So one class can implement many interfaces. Now, the most important thing, as I said, it is a contract we have to implement make sound and the lag count because it's not optional, because there is a contract now between the class dog and the interface, which really defines that we have to implement all members. You can see that basically here. Doc does not implement interface member animal legs and make sound. So show potential fixes. Let's implement the interface, which will basically just create a property. Now, let me just make that a little bit prettier. So let me just say prop int and then say legs, there we go. Now we have legs implemented. You can see the error is gone because we have legs implemented and the make sound. Now here we throw a not implemented. We can just remove that, write down console, write line, and let's just write down woof. So our dog now implements the eye animal and we definitely know that everything here is implemented because there is a contract and it's not optional. We have to implement the interface members. Now before we move on, if you want to boost your c -sharp skills and increase your chances on getting hired as a c -sharp developer, check out our c -sharp Progress Academy. It is a self-paced online course that teaches you ASP.NET Core, Angular, unit testing and even software design patterns. We offer a 14-day money-back guarantee and I'm absolutely sure that this is the fastest way on how you can progress as a c -sharp developer. So check the link in the description below or the info card which is popping up right now at the top right corner. So let's continue. The interface starts shining once we create another class, which is for example called cat, and also implements the interface. So I animal again, which basically means that we for sure have to implement make sound and the property for the legs. Let's copy that over and let's just replace the right line roof with, yo, there we go. So now what we can do, and that's just amazing, and you will understand that a little bit more in detail when we get to the dependency injection part, but we can now get any animal and we can confidently call the make sound method or grab the number of legs because we know it is implemented because interfaces are not optional. So 
We could, for example, just to show you any kind of use case, so we could create a list of iAnimal. Yes, you can create collections from interfaces. Let's call it animals. It's kind of generic, right? Is it a dog? Is it a cat? Well, we don't know. It is an iAnimal, right? So we definitely know we have a make sound method and we have a leg count. That's all we know right here. So let's say it is a new list of iAnimal. There we go. And now if we create a dog, let's say dog, dog equals to new dog. You get the idea, right? We can take our cat. <laughs> let's create a cat, so new cat. And then put both of them into the animals list. So animals dot add, we can add it because they implement the interface. Now, the great thing about it is that we know, as I said, know that each animal, since it's implementing the iAnimal interface, has a make sound method. So we could create a loop. Let's create a for each loop right here. Let me just write it down for each iAnimal. I wanna make sure that I don't use var so that you can really see the type animal in our animals collection. We can now use that animal and it's pointing to an instance of that object. So we can now call make sound. So without specifying if it's a dog or a cat, we can now just take the animal, whichever it is, it doesn't matter. We don't care about the actual class. As long as we have the interface implemented, we can call its members because they have to be implemented. As I said, we have a contract right here. So let's save it. Let's just start the application. We could see woof and meow as you can see right here. So that's working perfectly. Awesome. So if you like this video, definitely give it a thumb up right now and subscribe to our channel because you don't want to miss any upcoming C Sharp and .NET related videos. So earlier in this video, I said that we will talk about polymorphism and that's exactly what it is. So we have a dog and we have a cat and both of them are animals. So the list that we have right here, that's polymorphism. It can be a cat, it can be a dog, it can be anything that implements the actual interface. Awesome. So that's definitely something that's kind of interesting for object oriented programming, isn't it? Now let's move on. Let's talk about a very important topic, which is a little bit more advanced, but this is one scenario where interfaces are getting used a lot. So now let me just switch the code. Alrighty, so now let's get through it step by step. Here we have a new interface. It's called iDatabase Connection. So it is an interface iDatabase Connection. We have a void connect member here and a void disconnect member. So connect to a database, disconnect. As you can tell, we don't have any implementation. We don't have any logic inside here. It's just really the member itself, just the structure. Now, we have different database providers out there. We have SQL, so MySQL, for example, PostgreSQL or whatever. So SQL database connection. And for example, like NoSQL, like MongoDB or whatever. So a NoSQL database connection. Both of them connect entirely differently to a database or disconnect entirely differently, right? So both are connecting and disconnecting, but in a different way. So here we have the SQL database connection. I just pasted it for SQL database connection, right? It's implementing the iDatabase connection, which means that we have to create a public void connect and a void disconnect. Well, it doesn't have to be public, but void connect and void disconnect, right? So that's not optional. If I remove it, immediately the interface will start complaining there is a missing member. So let's just implement it again. So now here inside of connect and disconnect, we can write SQL specific logic. If it would be a no SQL or MongoDB database connection, whatever, it would be specific for MongoDB or no SQL. And you would change the code inside here. Alrighty, now let's scroll up. Let me just remove that public class right here and replace it. So here we have just a new class. Let's call it some class. And then we have a field here, right? So we have a private read only I database connection. So this is like our database connection. And again, you can see it is like an I, an interface, right? So it can be an SQL connection instance. It can be a MongoDB database connection instance, whatever class implements the I database connection. So now we don't have a dependency injection container register right now. If you want to learn more about dependency injection, check our video on that topic. We have a lot of important topics on our channel. So definitely take a look in our playlist, right? Now here we have a constructor and usually one common practice in dependency injection is to create an instance and pass it into another class or into your program or whatever via the constructor. So we would get an instance of a database connection right here. So this is why we have a constructor here and we assign the value, but that's not the important part. Okay. The important part is that it doesn't really matter if it's an 
SQL connection or MongoDB connection or whatever inside of our dependency injection container, we would say, okay, for our application, we will use SQL. And sometimes in another environment, we will use MongoDB or whatever, but we can still make use of the polymorphism because it can be SQL or MongoDB or whatever. And you can see that we can for sure take our do something method here, call it whenever we like, and it will just connect or disconnect depending on, well, the actual type of that database connection. So if it's an SQL one, we will connect to SQL. If it's a MongoDB one, we will connect to MongoDB and disconnect, right? So that's a common practice for dependency injection. This is why you can often, for example, in your ASP.NET Core applications can see that you will have interfaces right here because you don't need to specify a specific type. You can allow it for multiple types that all implement the actual interface. So I know this is some more advanced knowledge, but we have a lot of, well, advanced developers on our channel and we try to make everyone happy, right? So yeah, that's it for this video. There's so much more to say on interfaces. If you're interested, just write it down into the comments below or check out our repository design pattern video, which shows you, well, an architectural pattern, which is based on interfaces. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you back in the next video. Subscribe to our channel right now so that you no longer miss any upcoming videos and definitely check out our C Sharp Progress Academy because it's the fastest way on how you can progress as a C Sharp developer.